Hello and welcome to a new series which will be about the so-called Fourier transform. It's an important part of analysis and it has a lot of applications. And I can already tell you, it's named after the French mathematician Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier and therefore you will find a lot of different pronunciations of this transform. But no matter how it's pronounced, every mathematician physicist and engineer should know what it means. Simply because there are so many applications of it that no one can ignore such a nice tool. And because of that I would even say that sometimes we have the case that students of engineering learn more about the Fourier transform than some students of mathematics. Or to put it in other words, depending what you do in mathematics, you could ignore the Fourier transform but you cannot ignore it as a physicist or an engineer. One nice example one can always bring here is that the popular JPEG compression for digital pictures uses some form of a Fourier transform. However, to be clear from the beginning, in this video course here I will not talk about the applications because here we will do mathematics. This means also here we will analyze the Fourier transform in our typical mathematical way. And as you might already know, before we start with the definitions, I first want to thank all the nice people who support me on Steady, here on YouTube or by other means. I'm really happy about your support that makes this video course possible. And as a thank you, you find quizzes and PDF versions for the videos with the link in the description. Ok, then let's start by giving an overview of this video course. Usually. When people talk about the Fourier transform, they mean the continuous Fourier transform. And indeed it will be the main topic of this course, but we will not start with it. And we say it's the continuous Fourier transform because we consider functions defined on Rn. Moreover, the functions can be real valued or even complex valued. And in fact it makes sense to start immediately with the more general case of complex valued functions. Simply because the transformation we will apply to this function will make a complex valued function anyway. So we will create a new function which is usually called f hat. And indeed this is the whole idea. With such a transform we would be able to switch between both descriptions of the function to get some properties easily. However, I can already warn you, it will not work just for every function f here. In fact, the function will need some integrability property such that the transform is well defined. But more about that later in the series, because first we will start with something a little bit more simple. This is something you could call the discrete Fourier transform, but this is usually not how the name is used, we usually speak of Fourier series. There we will also consider functions but now they should be defined on the real number line. But still they will be real or complex valued. However in contrast to the continuous case this now should be a periodic function. This means the function will repeat itself again and again so it's sufficient to know just a bounded interval for the domain. Hence it's also possible to consider functions defined on an interval a to b. Obviously you can always extend such a function to a periodic function defined on the whole real number line. And now for such functions we also have a transform described by the Fourier series. It's the same idea and you could also say we get out a new function f hat. But now it's different because this function describes coefficients of a series. Therefore we can just say the domain is the set of integers. But as before the codomain is always given by the complex numbers. Ok and now what you should see here is that the ideas here are very similar but it's easier to start with the Fourier series and then extend this knowledge to the continuous Fourier transform. Now maybe as a mathematician you might think is there a general way that describes both things together and maybe even more. And indeed there is and I just call it Fourier analysis on groups. There we will need the general measure theory 
and it's definitely interesting to generalize the whole Fourier transform in this sense. However, that's not something I want to do in this course, because we have a lot to do with the first two chapters anyway. Only if there is some interest afterwards, we can talk a little bit about this general case. So you could say, in this video course, we will cover the two classical tools we have for the Fourier transform. And maybe we can start talking about the idea of the Fourier series and the Fourier transform, which is the continuous case. In both cases we consider a function and the best thing is to see this function as a time signal. This means we can see the x-axis here as a time variable. And now the idea is simply to look which frequencies are inside this function. A rough explanation for that would be is an approximation with sine and cosine functions possible? More precisely, we can take a whole superposition of sine and cosine functions, which means we can simulate a lot of oscillations if we want. And exactly the frequencies we need for the sine and cosine functions, we can save in our transform function. Therefore, for our f hat, we are in the frequency domain. So this should imply, if you know all the frequencies, you can reconstruct our original function on the left. And this immediately gives us an idea of an application, because here on the right hand side you could say, we only save the frequencies with the most impact. And then the function we get out on the left could still be roughly the same. In fact, this is the basic idea the JPEG compression from before has. But at the moment it's not clear at all how we do that in a mathematical way, but this is what we will do in the next videos. However, before you continue watching this series here, you should know about the essential requirements you need for understanding. And since we deal with functions here, you might already know that you need some knowledge of real analysis. So this is the first box here, and we will definitely need integration and derivatives from this course. And on the other hand, as I've already mentioned, we have linear combinations of cosine and sine functions, so we need linear algebra. In fact, it might be very helpful if you know some stuff of my abstract linear algebra course, because there we talk about function spaces. So therefore, after watching these two or three video courses, you can definitely start with this one here. The name of this series is Fourier Transform, but I already mentioned before, we start discussing Fourier series. So let's start with that in part 2, so I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.